Hello everyone and welcome to the video. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video we are going to talk about the fuel system of the Boeing 737NG. Note that in this video I will only talk about the standard fuel system fitted by Boeing and not about the auxiliary fuel system that is available on the Boeing business jets and the 737-900ER. So the AUX fuel system is going to be covered in a separate video from this one. So the fuel system obviously supplies uh, fuel to the engines and the APU and fuel is contained in three tanks, two located in the wings and one center tank. The center tank itself actually is um, quite a bit larger than the wing tanks. So the wing tanks can take 3915 kilograms each depending on the density of the fuel while the center tank can take 13,066 kilograms making up for a total uh, usable fuel quantity of 20,896 kilograms. Note that all these uh, figures represent the amount of usable fuel. There is a little bit um, more space in the tanks for uh, unusable fuel and unusable fuel basically means that due to the fact that we have the uh, huge tanks and we have um, the fuel pumps that have to be able to suck all of the fuel in there is also a little bit of a fuel quantity in the tanks that cannot be sucked in by the pumps and therefore is not usable for um, engines and APU. This, however, is filtered out by the fuel quantity indication system, so all that you see on the fuel quantity indication actually is usable fuel. So, normally the uh, left-hand engine is fed from the left side of the fuel manifold, that is the um, number one forward and aft pumps, as well as the number one center tank pump, while the right-hand engine is fed from the um, number two main tank, so in the right wing, and the uh, right center tank pump. With a fuel trust feed valve you can connect um, the system in a way that each engine can be fed from each fuel tank. Check valves are located throughout the fuel system to ensure proper direction of fuel flow and to prevent transfer of fuel between the different tanks. So. To be uh, precisely clear on this one, it is not possible to transfer fuel from one tank to another. The only way to balance fuel in the 737NG is by burning fuel from the um, tank with more fuel until the fuel levels are going to be approximately equal. So let's talk about the fuel pumps then. Each fuel tank has two AC powered fuel pumps which are cooled and lubricated by the fuel passing through the pump and the center tank pumps are producing higher pressure than the main tank pumps therefore if all six pumps are being turned on the fuel from the tank with the highest pressure is being used first so that means that the center tank fuel is being used before the main tank fuel is being used. Note however that if you have the trust feed open and the for main tank fuel pumps on, it can happen that fuel is only being used from a single tank due to the fact that in theory all the pumps are producing the same output pressure, but in practical terms there are slight tolerances for the amount of pressure given by each pump and therefore it is possible that one pump may be stronger than all the others and that could result in a condition where, provided the fuel trust feed valve is open, Fuel is only being used from a single main tank. In any case, the center tank pumps will have higher pressure than the main tank pumps. So, the center tank fuel pumps are equipped with an automatic shutoff after a short delay when the pump sensors detect a low output pressure. And this is going to shut the pump itself off, but the pilot still has to turn off the uh, fuel pump switch manually. Running the center tank dry is actually not permitted, at least not doing it on purpose. So the manual says that um, running the center tank dry on purpose is not permitted. And therefore it is required for the pilot to switch the pumps off as soon as the low pressure lights start flickering. Now, 
Do note that the fuel pump low pressure lights may flicker when the tank quantity is low and the airplane is in a climb the center on the ground with a nose down attitude. And this is actually being simulated by PMDG. So if you are climbing and then leveling off into cruise flight, you are going to notice that the fuel quantity indication for your uh, main, uh, sorry, for your center tank is actually going to slightly increase. While if you are running the tank dry in cruise and then start the descent, chances are that a couple uh, of tens of kilos are being shown on the quantity system again because fuel is then running from its distribution within the tank towards the front of the tank where the fuel uh, quantity measuring system is installed. So if your airplane has a nose high attitude, your fuel quantity indicated is going to be lower than the actual quantity. And if you have a nose down attitude, your indicated fuel quantity is going to be higher than the actual fuel quantity. Also note that the center tank fuel pump low pressure lights may flicker when the tank quantity is low and the airplane is in a cruise. And one pump light may indicate low pressure sooner than the other due to the aircraft's attitude or slight variation between the pump inlet position. So it is totally normal when the center tank is about to run dry in cruise that the low pressure lights are going to start flickering. And as soon as they start flickering, that is your indication to turn the uh, center tank fuel pumps off. Now this is going to leave a slight amount of fuel in the center tank, but that is being taken off by the scavenge pump with which we are going to take care of in a couple moments. So just because the low pressure lights are flickering, it doesn't immediately give you a master caution. So it can take up to five minutes before the um, master caution and fuel system annunciator lights are going to come on for the associated center tank pump. So what you have to do then is constantly checking the um, center tank quantity when you are approaching the um, low fuel status in the center tank. So when this is running approximately to the zero position, then have a frequent eye on the low pressure lights on the center tank fuel pumps. And when they start flickering, it's about time to turn them off. Note, however, that the fuel quantity you see on the fuel quantity indicating system is not 100% accurate. So it only has to be accurate to within 5% of the indicated value. And the indicator is going to reach zero before the actual tank quantity is zero. So usually the way this works is the center tank quantity reaches the zero. And then you have about one or two minutes before the actual center tank um, quantity goes so low that the uh, pump output um, low pressure lights start to flicker. And when that happens, it's time to turn the center tank fuel pumps off. This is going to leave a little bit of fuel quantity in the uh, center tank. And therefore, we have the uh, center tank fuel scavenged jet pump installed. The pump itself is bound to the number one main tank forward pump switch. So as long as this is being turned on, fuel, the uh, scavenge pump is automatically going to transfer any remaining center tank fuel to the main tank number one. And fuel transfer begins when the number one tank quantity is approximately 50%. Once the process has begun, it is going to continue for the remainder of the flight. So you are going to notice that if you're flying with the fuel in the center tank and you turn the pumps on as you're supposed to do, so before they are running completely dry, then you are going to notice that once the uh, left fuel tank quantity reaches approximately half, it, you will get a slight fuel imbalance between the left and the right tanks because the remainder of the fuel from the center tank is being transferred into the left tank. Now, usually we're talking about something in the region of approximately 50 kilograms here. So it is nothing severe that you um, would have to be concerned about. And it is absolutely acceptable to continue the flight with this slight imbalance. When the main tank fuel pump pressure is low, the engines can draw fuel from the corresponding main tank through a suction feed line that bypasses the fuel pump. So, what this basically means 
is um, that even with the fuel pumps off or failed, it is still possible for the engines to continue running simply because the uh, engines will be fed through a uh, suction then rather than through the main electric um, fuel pumps. Now, when the airplane climbs, this however means that air that has previously been uh, dissolved in the fuel can be released from the fuel due to the decreasing air pressure. You will be aware of this. Um, it's just the same as if you have water and you are reducing the pressure outside. Then the water can actually start to boil and release its air. Even though it, the temperature of the water has not changed. So similar things can happen with uh, the fuel where if you don't have your fuel under pressure, so if the uh, AC driven pumps are off and the outside pressure drops, then air can be released from the fuel, thereby reducing the fuel flow to the engines and especially at high altitude this means thrust deterioration or engine flame out may occur as a result of the fuel flow reduction. However, the uh, dissolved air in the fuel tank will eventually deplete when reaching cruising altitude the time this takes is dependent on airplane altitude, fuel temperature and the type of fuel being used. And once the dissolved air is depleted, the engine may be capable of suction feed operation at cruise power. So, let's talk about the fuel trust feed then. As I briefly said earlier on, it is not possible for the fuel to be pumped from one tank into another. So, all that you can do with a truss feed valve is to feed each engine from each fuel tank. So, let's demonstrate that for a moment. I'll turn the uh, light test off here. So, let's open up the fuel truss feed valve. The light is going to illuminate bright, then dim. And now, the uh, two main tanks are interconnected. I'm going to turn those fuel pumps on to resemble the uh, normal state that we would experience in a cruise. And now let's assume that the right tank fuel quantity would be low. We are using an acronym here. Low side must go, or low must go. So, with the truss feed open, if you have an imbalance with the right side having less fuel than the left side, you would now turn the right hand pumps off, so that the left side is going to supply fuel through the truss feed valve to the engines. Now you are going to have to set a timer here because it is going to take a while since now fuel is being burned from both engines from the left hand tank and this happens at a rate of approximately 40 kilograms a minute in cruise flight at normal cruise power. So fuel consumption in cruise is usually around 40 kilograms a minute and now we're drawing 40 kilograms from the left hand tank per minute. Note however, due to the delay in the fuel quantity indication system actually showing you the um, difference or the fuel burn, you will have to turn the remainder of the pumps back on when you have approximately 40 kilograms more in the higher tank than in the lower tank. So, let's say that your fuel quantity is um, 40 kilograms higher in the left tank than on the right tank. Then, turn the right hand pumps back on. And once they are on and the low pressure lights are uh, extinguished, close the fuel truss feed valve. And you will notice that the left tank uh, fuel quantity is then still going to reduce a little bit further before the right end quantity starts reducing so that your fuel is going to be approximately balanced thereafter. Also note on the cross feed valve that the light of the cross feed valve is connected to the same circuit breaker as the actual cross feed valve itself. So this means when you are opening the valve the light is going to go from off to bright and then to dim. Now, that clearly indicates the bright light that the valve is in transit 
and once it goes into dim, it indicates that the valve is open. However, here comes the big threat. When you are closing the crossfeed valve, the light is also going to go into bright to indicate that it's in transit, and thereafter it's going to extinguish to show that the valve is closed. However, if the crossfeed valve circuit breaker trips while the valve is in transit, then the light is also going to extinguish because it is bound to the same circuit breaker on the 737NG. So, let's say we're closing the um, valve now. It goes to bright and then to off. After you've done that, do run a test on the light. So, in real life you could simply push that light in and that is going to trigger a, a test of the light. Unfortunately, this is not simulated in the PMDG. So, in the PMDG, click on the light test check that the light is still illuminating and then you know that the uh, system has operated correctly and that the circuit breaker has not simply tripped which would also extinguish the light. This has changed in the 737 MAX so in the 737 MAX there is a separate circuit breaker for the light exactly because of this problem. Also be aware Due to slightly different fuel pressures from the uh, main tank pumps, for the uh, reasons that I've explained earlier on, if your cross seat valve is open and you have the main tank um, pumps turned on, a fuel imbalance can start to develop because one pump may have a higher output pressure than the other, which may result in the pressure from one tank being slightly higher than uh, pressure from the other tank. Let's talk about the fuel shutoff valves then. We have our engine valve and our spa valves located up here, or rather we have the lights for them located up here. When you are going to turn on or off the um, fuel to an engine, like I'm doing now, you will notice that they are going bright, indicating movement, and then they will extinguish to indicate that the uh, valves have moved into the open position. Similarly, when you are going to turn the um, switch back off, you'll notice that they are going first bright and then dim to indicate that the lights are in the closed position. Note that this is opposite to the fuel crossfeed valve. In the crossfeed valve, actually when it's open we see the dim light because that is the, let's call it, non-normal state of the system. So during normal operation the valve would not be opened. And with the um, fuel shutoff valves, it's exactly the other way around. So when the shutoff valves are closed, they are illuminated dim. And when the shutoff valves are open, they are extinguished. And that is because the open position is, of course, the normal position throughout the flight. Next up is our fuel temperature. We have the fuel temperature indicator gauge located up here. And... As the name suggests, it indicates the temperature of the fuel. The sensor for this is located in the main tank number one, so in the left wing tank, and that allows monitoring of the fuel temperature. The system itself is powered by AC electrical power. Now, let's have a quick look at the operating limitations over here. So, the maximum fuel temperature that's allowed is 49 degrees centigrade, and the minimum fuel temperature prior to takeoff and in flight is minus 43 degrees centigrade or 3 degrees above the fuel freezing point temperature, whichever is higher. Now the fuel freezing point is going to be determined by the provider of your fuel, so you're going to find that on the fuel bill in most cases. In terms for flight simulation, we'll have to use minus 43 degrees centigrade as the lower limit. Intentional dry running of a center tank fuel pump, so the low pressure light illuminated, is prohibited. In terms of uh, fuel loading, the main tanks, number 1 and 2, must be full if the center tank contains more than 453 kilograms or 1,000 pounds of fuel. Now that is a hard limitation here. In terms of fuel balance, the lateral imbalance between main tanks number 1 and 2 must be scheduled to be zero. However, a random fuel imbalance that may exist during takeoff, uh, taxi, flight or landing must not exceed 453 kilograms. So a couple of you have asked me a question earlier like, when do I need to balance fuel? So this is your answer. 
if the uh, fuel imbalance exceeds more than 453 kilograms, then you must balance fuel. Now, it can be a good idea to do it earlier on. However, especially my company is very careful there because it has happened more often than not that people started to balance fuel, then they forgot that they were balancing and then created an imbalance into the other direction. There are plenty of stories. If you're going to ask any captain who's been flying for longer than 10 years, they are going to tell you stories that exactly this has already happened to them. So, finally, um, APU fuel feed. When the AC fuel pumps are operating, fuel for the APU is supplied from the left side of the fuel manifold. And if the AC fuel pumps are not operating, fuel is suction fed from the main tank number one. So, let's talk about what that means for a small moment. If the APU is running, fuel is being drawn from the left side of the manifold. With the center tank pumps being on, it will come from the center tank. So, not much of a hazard being created there. However, if you are running the APU and have fuel in the main tanks only, then only the left tank fuel quantity is going to decrease. For a short period of time, that is no problem at all. However, problems are created once you are waiting for an extended period of time on the ground. So, if you're waiting, for example, for an ATC slot and you're standing there for an hour, and you have the air conditioning running and everything running, then your APU can easily use like 150 kilograms of fuel per hour. Now, Boeing wouldn't be Boeing if they wouldn't measure this in pounds, so you're looking at about 220 to 250 pounds per hour of uh, fuel usage from the APU, which is going to be drawn from the uh, main tank. Some pilots, therefore, with extended uh, ground delays, do open the cross feed valve on the ground, However, be very careful with this to close it before flight so that you don't accidentally create an imbalance due to different pump output pressures. Normally, I would say, in order for the uh, fuel imbalance to exceed 453 kilos as limited by Boeing, it would take several hours of APU usage, which you are rather unlikely to do. However, it did happen to me already. So, Provided the uh, fuel imbalance is less than 453 kilos or 1,000 pounds, I would always recommend you just to balance the fuel out in flight and uh, not to mess with it on the ground so that you can't forget the uh, cross feed valve. Let's have a quick look at the fuel quantity indication system. Basically, all the important stuff has been uh, set on it already in that it... Um, lags slightly behind the actual fuel usage. Also be aware that the uh, fuel quantity indicator we have on the uh, upper display unit is not necessarily showing the same as the fuel quantity indicator on the FMC. Differences of 1 or 200 kilograms can easily occur and are totally normal. And be aware that when you're climbing the fuel quantity indicator is going to be lower than the actual when you're in level flight, it's more or less accurate, but still lagging approximately a minute behind the actual fuel usage. And when you're descending, the fuel quantity indicated is going to be higher than the actual usable fuel quantity. This basically concludes our look at the fuel system of the Boeing 737NG. I hope that you have found this one interesting. If you did, please leave a like and a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so yet. If you really appreciate my videos and want to support the channel, I always appreciate a donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link that you can find in the video description below. Until then, thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to see you all in the virtual skies again hopefully soon.